And we've got uh, Republican Congressman Darrell Issa, Chairman of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, which may hold hearings over the incident. Congressman, good morning. First, can you add to the story as we know it? Well, what we see is that this story is larger than 11 individuals. It's part of what has been told to us is a pattern of behavior that's built up, so-called wheels-up parties and the like. And clearly, you have an elite unit, generally, that we count on to have the greatest of security, not just for the president, but for the cabinet and for other officials. And we need to know that they're living up to, uh, to that on a broad basis. We clearly have lost confidence. We need to get that confidence back by knowing that the system will be changed. Does that mean you're going to conduct an investigation? We're going to primarily look over the shoulder of the inspector general and other people. Our role is primarily not to be the direct investigators, but to uh, to verify that the investigation, what the president's calling rigorous, uh, is done, and then that there are corrective actions that are done there, just as we need them done at the GSA. Uh, with me here, America Hill and, and Nora. O'Donnell. I actually wanted to throw this to Nora quickly. Um, as the congressman said, he believes this is more widespread. One former head of the Secret Service told the New York Times that he actually disagrees with the congressman's assessment, that, it's in, that finds that this would likely be more rare. What are you hearing? What is the word in Washington in terms of the thinking about how widespread these type of incidents could be? The Secret Service wants this to make sure that this is contained and that it's not more widespread, but they're still conducting this investigation. I don't think they know fully yet is the direct answer. The biggest problem is that these Secret Service agents, while they're not part of the elite detail, the body men that are around the president, they all have security clearances. They were in a secure zone. They allegedly brought a prostitute inside a secure zone, and so there's a concern about espionage, mm -hmm. blackmail. That's why this cannot stand, other than its immoral behavior, there is a security concern here. Uh, Congressman Issa, tell us more about how you feel about this violation of the security era, uh, area. Well, what we're concerned about is the, the failure today can lead to blackmail 5, 10, 20 years from now. People who, who have basically betrayed their country in the past have normally started off thinking rather terribly benignly. If you look at, at how you get somebody to do something wrong, you do it incrementally, something small, something bigger, something bigger. In this case, these individuals are beginning, maybe they're not on the elite detail, but in fact they're part of that security. And 10 years from now, will that, will that behavior change because they've moved up in rank? I don't think they would, but more importantly, the American people want to know that they get value for their money at Secret Service. They want to know they get the value for their money at, at GSA, which means that whatever the rules are and the expectations are, they've got to be met. And Congressman, let me ask you, when you say there's been concern about wheels up parties, what do you mean by that? Well, that's a term that, uh, that we've heard used from these foreign trips, that in fact, when, you know, when the president leaves, there's a wheels up party. Okay, fine. That's when you can sort of let your hair down. The question is, in this case, you had a, you had a pre wheels down party. You had drinking and you had activity that clearly compromised the ring of security, at least some, because you now had people inside secure areas, people who could have come in with all kinds of microphones or in fact could have done something or later on could have blackmailed. All of this went on before the president arrived. So this, this really goes beyond what we've heard in the past. It's an area of concern. But again, whether you're a Secret Service, uniform service, or plain clothes, whether you're low ranking or high ranking, compromising somebody in a way in which they could be blackmailed in the future is a serious threat for people who hold high clearances and who ultimately are counted on for the safety and security of our most important packages now or in the future. Uh, Congressman, your hearing into the GSA scandal coming out of Las Vegas begins today. What do you expect to find? What we expect to find is that, again, what you have is a pattern, a pattern that may have begun under the Bush administration. Certainly the dollars of growth indicate there was more money being spent on this particular uh, every two-year event. But what, what we see is it got very much out of control. The American people are now aware of it. But it begs a bigger question is, all along in the GSA, the institution that's supposed to set the gold standard for savings for the federal uh, workforce, for our facilities, and for our purchasing of, of goods and services, seems to go just the opposite. If they're getting it wrong and getting it so wrong in one place or two places or three places we've discovered, it's likely that it's a pattern of behavior that, again, is costing the American people 
hundreds of millions, perhaps billions of dollars, and setting a bad example for the rest of the federal workforce. If GSA is wasting your money, undoubtedly others will feel less uh, uh, incentivized to have austerity. And this is something where the president came in saying he was going to scrub these kinds of activities. Now when we find a very delayed investigation, the excuse is, well, Bush did it too. You know what? The American people may not have thought President Bush was a fiscal conservative reducing the size of government, but this is been a showing that neither is this president and it's got to end now we've got to in congress not just talk about cutting budgets but we've got to show how you can really bring austerity reasonable Congress. austerity to the federal workforce and las vegas wasn't an example of it congressman thank you very much for joining us this morning it's great thank to you. see you here too thank, thank you, you.